Well, hello everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. Today is May 27th, 2021, and this is week 62, Gail. 62 weeks of doing this. This is pretty incredible. And man, I, I am excited uh, for tonight's message, and I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I've had some coffee this afternoon, and I just had my first Diet Mountain Dew soda since Sunday, so I am pretty torqued up after dinner. So... Uh, hopefully this won't be uh, about seven minutes long because I'm going to talk probably really fast, Carol. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about tonight, man. I am so excited to dig into God's Word. But I hope you guys are doing well. Like I said, this is week 62, May 27th. And uh, just to check in, first off to say thank you for always inviting me into your personal space and allowing me the opportunity and the privilege of uh, you know re opening God's Word and reading what God's Word and how it applies to us today. And um, continue prayers for my dad and for Gail, uh, for Mary and Wayne. Just a quick update on them. I spoke with uh, Mary this afternoon, and uh, Mary is doing well. She's, she's being kept up at, at the house. Uh, Wayne is now out of the ICU intensive part of the ICU, but moved into a different part of the ICU. It's a little bit of a step down. And it is a, um, a little bit bigger of a room. They took off his... Um, his uh, pacemaker, which was portable, which they could put back on. Uh, he has been get, getting therapy. They had him up this morning. Uh, he's got a little bit more strength. So, Carol, he's actually made a lot of, a lot of headway today for being in 24 hours. So, Wayne, we're still praying for you, buddy. I want you to continue to get your strength. I want you to get your legs under you. I know it takes time, but these little small steps add up to big things. So, we're pretty excited about that for you. So, keep that going, man. We're praying for you. So continue prayers for Kyle and Maddie. Uh, Kyle uh, had his interview last week that went very well, so we're hoping to hear something with some good news here in the next week or so. Um, continue prayers for, let's talk about the babies, okay? How, what a blessing they are for our lives and, and for our families and, and all that. But miracles, just unbelievable. So we're praying for Maddie, for Marissa, for Miranda and Abriella. Uh, continue prayers for them. And, and Alex, I gotta add Alex on here. I always forget Alex on here. I'm sorry, Alex. But I am happy to say that uh, congrats to the Shoemaker family on a baby boy. Uh, Carol was just able to uh, give me a quick update on uh, delivery, which had some difficulties to it, but everything and everybody is fine. And oddly enough, I mean, Hannah had the baby yesterday and she's home today. <laughs> They don't, they don't keep anybody. So Carol, come here, say hello. We'll get the dogs out of here because they're annoying. So, hey, Mama C is here. Um, let's talk a little bit why we got you here for uh, 2G2G, which is the Opportunity House new ministry that we started. Well, we, we continued last week that we've been in hiatus now for about, about a year and four months or so. So that kicked off last Thursday. You got, got any thoughts on that? Stop, Harley. Stop. It was good. I mean, it was a little slow because I don't think they really advertised, and there yep. were—I think there were more volunteers than actual people. Yep, it, it was definitely what we call a uh, soft start. So it was not advertised. We had um, He's Alive Church came in with with a meal that which one of one of which was donated from the Speedway Club, and uh, we had our Kathleen in the kitchen doing all the prep work. We helped out a little bit with that and. It was a lot of time for just some fellowship. The music was great. Jan did a great job with that. Pastor Thad was there. He had a little bit of testimony time. It was good to see some familiar faces like, you know, Gail and the girls from He's Alive and uh, Ashley. Ashley was there Ms. and Pat. Lenny and Miss Pat was there. I got a good picture of her. Got to take her home and drop her off. So it was good to catch up with her. And Edwin was there, that's right. Francisco, I didn't even recognize you, buddy. You, 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 had, you had all this going on in here. So I, I didn't Andy. Know. And Andy from the band was in there. So it was just great, man. I'm really, really excited uh, about tomorrow. Well, tonight, it's, it's tomorrow since today's Wednesday. But when you're watching this, it is tonight. So I'm excited about that. And I'm going to share just a little bit more about that because I got a little bit of a surprise to say. So... Carol, thanks. Uh, we do want to say that uh, we are praying for Carol's co-worker uh, for uh, con conceiving, I guess is the right term. 
IVF treatment, yeah. Yeah, that, that thing. So th that's that whole process is now started. She's begun treatment on that for her and her husband uh, to re you know conceive a baby. And we're also uh, praying for Carol's boss, this is his brother. Uh, he has been diagnosed with cancer, so we are praying uh, for her. So Carol, you can feel free to share with them that we're praying for them. Yeah, he's, um, I will tell her, she'll be happy to know that. He's in like his last stages in hospice. So okay. They've been trying to, he's home, so when he was in the hospital, they couldn't see him because of COVID. Oh, he's so. home and hoping they can. Oh, that's, that's great. What a great blessing so that is to be there. Just anytime. Yeah. So okay. her name is Caroline. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. Caroline, we're praying for your brother. We're praying for your family. We're praying for for peace and comfort for you guys. Yeah. So I know it's a hard time, but you know, God, God's got something to teach us in all these moments, in all these seasons, even in difficult seasons. I'm gonna take the dogs out. Okay. Sounds no good. No Paisley tonight. No Paisley tonight. Okay. I missed that little kid. She was here with us last night, but uh, we actually got her in the pool last night. She splashed around a little bit. She cried a lot because she don't like the water in her face. And Kyle just kept dunking her in there, but splashing her. But uh, let me tell you, she went down hard last night and slept till what time, Carol? Um, she went to bed at 9 and she slept till 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. That's 11, uh, 13 hours of sleeping. Oh, my gosh. That's a gross spurt waiting to happen there. So, uh, man, it's, been, it's good. I'm excited. Um, you know what I've noticed in the, in the last week or so? I mean, we've gotten signs taken down from work and the, the whole media has changed and the whole mask thing has changed. And Carol and I and, and uh, Maddie and Kyle and, and Paisley, we went to one of our favorite restaurants in uh, South Carolina over the weekend to celebrate my birthday on Saturday. It was the very, well, about the second time, but the first real time we actually went out to get something to eat. and. All these people there. There was a two-hour wait to get in there. Some people wear masks, some people not. No big deal. Whatever is you're comfortable with, whatever your safety meter is, is fine. And that's you. I'm me. I'll wear it when I feel like I need it. You wear it when you need. You feel like you need it. Wash your hands. Stay separate from uh, as, as much as you can. But we had a really, really nice dinner, and uh, it was nice. I mean, it's just so weird now after being a year and four months of being told to wear a mask at, at all times. I mean, even. There was talk about wearing it in your house with your family. I mean, I wouldn't go as far as wearing it in bed and in a shower or whatever, but I mean, that's pretty much what the level they were talking. And now all of a sudden, the light flipped. And now it's just totally different. I don't know exactly what happened. Like what changed this angle to maneuver into this new mode? I don't know if I'm completely ready for it. Uh, work has been. Pretty scarce as far as people, but that is going to come to a change here pretty soon in early August. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to start gearing myself up for it. You know, uh, Gail, I only saw you hug two people last week or last Thursday. So I know you're stepping forward just a little slow on this too. So you guys have to stick together with me. But how, how is your adjustment going? What does it look like for you? You know, feel free to comment on, on the comments down below and that, that would be great. Uh, like I said, I, I turned uh, 55 last Thursday, so I want to thank you. Since I'm not on Facebook, I, Cal read me all the posts. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the birthday wishes. Um, I'll take turn, turning 55, even though I wasn't feeling too good. I had some kind of stomach thing happening on uh, Sunday night and into Monday, and I actually called out sick. Uh, I don't do that too often, so you know I was feeling pretty bad. But um, we, Cal and I still made it. <laughs> I'll tell you this real quick. But Carol says, uh, you know, for your birthday, we should, we should go out to eat, but I know you're not feeling all that good. I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not feeling all that good. But I got this, I got this uh, gift card. We could go over to a place. I'm not going to tell you where, uh, but it's a local place that's here. And after we get done, we can go over to BJ's. I said, whoa, that's exciting, man. I'm 55, and that's like, you know, the best news I've ever heard. So, I mean... What, this is what we've become, you know? I'm, I'm happy to be in BJ's walking around, even though I felt like crap. And you, you know what I ate for my birthday dinner? I almost finished two meatballs. <laughs> That's it, I, I couldn't do it, man. It was, it was just too funny. But anyway, uh, too much about all that stuff. I just wanted to catch you guys up to date. I am so excited to see you guys tonight and next week. So uh, we're getting this thing going on 2G, 2G. So I'm pretty excited about that. So let's pray and we'll dig into Genesis chapter 9 tonight and we'll unpack a little bit about what God's got to say to us and for us. So Heavenly Father, we thank you 
uh, for today. We just thank you for the opportunity tonight, Lord, to, to come together, uh, to open your word, to let you breathe into us what it is that not only you breathed into Noah during his time, but also into us and what it means to us today from your word. Your word is timeless and it always reflects your character, your love, and who you are for us. And Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for all the prayer requests that we get to lift up for even Carolyn Harlan, which I skipped over on my sheet right here. We're gonna lift Carolyn Harlan up to you as well. But for Carol's coworkers and her boss's brother, for all the babies uh, that are coming, for congratulations to the Shoemaker family for kicking off 2G, 2G last week and my birthday, and for Mary and Wayne and Kyle and Maddie and Dad and Gail and whatever other mention that is here that I'm missing. Lord, we lift those things to you and we trust you in those things. Lord, you have a word for us tonight and I look forward to uh, digging into this. Lord, open our minds, open our ears and open our hearts for you for we can better understand what your word has got to say to us tonight and how to apply it. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. I look forward to seeing everybody in just a few hours. And uh, Lord, it's just a great time. It's great to coming back. It's great to, to feel like you're, you're ready to cross the finish line and to start something new. The training, the isolation, the time in the ark, whatever it is that you want to look at it like, something new is coming. That part is coming to a close and something new is coming. You are going to do something new, Lord, and we're trusting you in, in that. And Lord, uh, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone say amen. So, I am excited tonight. If you guys are ready, I want you to hit your neighbor. I want you to comment below. I want you to do something to just get excited about, you know, uh, God's Word in Genesis chapter 9. So for the past three weeks, Gail, three weeks, Mary and Dad and Uncle Jimmy, uh, we have been in the story of Noah and the ark. Um, as God flooded the earth to remove the wickedness and the sin and the evil from the people, God only saw Noah and his family. They found favor in God's eyes and all the earth. God uh, instructed Noah to build an ark with proper dimensions and specific specifications, and it took Noah a year on this building project. Noah entered the ark with his family and the animals that God chose to save and entered the ark, and God shut them in. God was with Noah, his family, and the animals. This was not on Noah's shoulders to shut that door. God shut them in. God was with him. So for 40 days and for 40 nights, a catastrophic rain and weather event was taking place. The highest peak on the earth covered 20 feet underwater. A year of waiting, a year of floating, a year of dreaming of what is next and when, what it, will it look like, the anxiety and anticipation, a year of waiting. Maybe even a year, Gail, of seasickness. These are land people. Uh, Noah was a person that had vineyards and he was a person of the land and now he's on a boat. I know that um, some people don't do very well on a boat. My dad, does, my dad loves boats, but he won't go on a boat. Uh, he does, I don't think he knows how to swim, but we went all the way to Maryland one year to go fishing, and there was some weather that was in, and he was the only one that said, nope, I'll skip it. He stayed back, and he <laughs> might have been the smart one of the whole crew, but uh, we all went out fishing, and the water was rough, and when the captain tells you to put your life jacket on on the way back, we have a problem. So imagine the seasickness that was taking place by some crew members, not me, but some of the crew members. So Noah spent a year floating around on this, maybe with seasickness, I don't know. But then the ark landed. It landed in the mountains of Ararat, which is in eastern Turkey. And Genesis 8, 15, then God said to Noah, come out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and their wives. Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you, the birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground, so they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase in number upon it. And the first thing that Noah does when he gets off the ark 
is he builds, his first priority is building an altar. And he worshiped God. That was his first priority. This pleased God so well. Genesis 8.21 says, The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said it in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of man, even though, everyone say even though, even though every inclination of his heart is evil from childhood, and never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. So that brings us up. Just to caption and catch us all up on the same page. We're all together. We are in Genesis chapter 9. So let's, let's dig in. Then God blessed Noah and his son, saying to them, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. The fear and dread of you will fall upon all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air, upon every creature that moves along the ground and upon all the fish of the sea. They are given into your hands. He's talking to Noah. They are given into your hands. Verse three, everything, everything that lives and moves, check this out, Gail. Everything that lives and moves will be food for you. Just as I give, gave you the green plants, I now give you everything, Uncle Jimmy. I give you it all. But you must not eat meat that has its lifeblood still in it. Gail, this is a long, long chapter. And it's jam-packed with amazing teaching points from God. And we will only get through, we're only gonna get part of chapter nine. I got you a little start. We are only gonna get through part of it tonight. So I'm gonna ask, is that okay? Is that okay? We're not gonna do the whole chapter nine because here's my little, my little secret. Next week, I'm gonna preach the closing of Noah in person, okay? All right, that's, that's my little secret. That's my little nugget that I'm giving you guys. We will close out this chapter next week live. So that's gonna be awesome. And I can't wait to be preaching in front of some people. But I don't wanna skim over all this. I don't wanna just skim over chapter nine and go to this next week to go to something different. I, there are too many important ingredients and details that we can learn from this and be able to apply it into our life today. So Genesis nine, one through four. We see that God tells Noah to go and be fruitful. Everything that lives and moves will be food for you. That is huge. Just as I've given you green plants, I now give you everything. But you must not eat meat that has its lifeblood still in it. Now, check this out. We are in chapter 9, which the whole flood thing started in chapter 6, right? God creates Adam and Eve in chapter 1. We're in chapter 6. God's given, given everybody a reboot, man. He's doing all this stuff over again. Thousands and thousands of years, even though it's only six chapters in the Bible. Thousands of years have went by, right? And Adam and Eve, I thought long and hard about this, and I'm not even actually sure about it, but I mean, somebody tell me if I'm wrong or if I'm right, or maybe that's an idea that nobody's ever thought of. See, maybe Adam and Eve didn't have to eat meat. Let's focus on that. Verse three. Everything that lives and moves will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. So maybe Adam and Eve didn't eat meat because they were in the garden. It's a garden, right? Have you ever thought of that? This was, this was an Arby's moment for me. I mean, think about it. They didn't probably eat meat, right? They, they were buddies with the animals, maybe, because they were not food. The animals were not food. I mean, look at the animals today. They, they kind of look at you different, right? Deer run away from you. Alpacas look at you kind of weird. I mean, different animals, they know that they could be possibly food, right? They are fearful of man. And we see some animals as food, right? And some, some we shouldn't, even though some places in the world does. Uh, but God gives Noah the command that everything that lives will be food for you. It will be food for us. With one stipulation added to this, okay? There's one guideline to follow and honor. Honor is a big word. We have to follow this guideline and honor it. And honor being the big point. Verse four, you must not eat meat 
that is lifeblood still in him. See, I am not a hunter, guys. I am not a hunter. I didn't grow up, you know, far off into the woods or in the back country someplace. I mean, my family always provided. We always went to the store to get our food. And see, hunting for me, I tell Carol this all the time when I'm shopping with her. That's why I'm not usually allowed to go <laughs> shopping with her for food. But hunting for me is like um, hunting down something and finding it in Harris Teeter. Okay? It's just, it's just not set up. I can't find anything in Harris Teeter. I, I roam the whole store looking for stuff, and I actually have to hunt this stuff down. And I fully believe that most grocery stores are not set up for men, right? We have to hunt this stuff. It doesn't make logical sense where stuff is in the store. That's just my opinion, Gail. But if I had to hunt and feed my family, I would. And this touches on many discussional topics here, okay? So I don't want to talk about animal cruelty. I don't want to talk about PETA and all the other stuff. That We aren't here to talk or debate about that. I do know that there are a lot of friends of mine, and there are a lot of hunters that are out there. And many of my hunters, take, my friends that are hunters, take it very, very seriously, right? Do you know any hunters? I mean, how serious are they about their hunting and their approach and their way of doing things and the way they look and the things that they carry and the time that they spent invested in it? There is a code and an honor to the hunt. Okay? You may not want to, want to know this. Maybe you do know this. Maybe not. Okay? I'm thinking of Phil Robertson right now. There is a code and an honor to the hunt. There is a level of respect for the animal. The hunt is to be clean and it is to be swift. It's an honor code. Okay? It is an honor code to be thankful for the animal. And it's life to feed a family and supply life. There is such a level of respect level for us. And this is where this comes from. I know my buddies who hunt. There is such a level of respect for the animal. This is where this comes from. Genesis 9.3, God gives Noah the instruction that everything that lives and moves will be food for you. Genesis 9.5, 9.5, and for your lifeblood, check this out, your, everyone say your, that's, that's huge, and for your lifeblood, I will surely demand an accounting. Everyone say an accounting. There's a check and a balance. There's a payment and a debt. There is an accounting, okay? The numbers have to match and they matter. And for your lifeblood, I will surely demand an accounting. I will demand an accounting from every animal and from each man too. I will demand an accounting for, check this out, the life of his fellow men. Let me read that one more time. I will demand an accounting for the life of his fellow men. See, it's all about the blood, and there will be an accounting for it. Pastor Thad had sent this thing out um, a couple of weeks ago talking about the blood, and it was absolutely fascinating. And when I saw this in here, I was like, oh my gosh, this is where it all comes down to. This is, completes the cycle of, of what he was saying. See, it's, it has to be accounted for. The, it's the only moving, life-giving thing in our bodies. There are five quarts of fluid running in our bodies, and blood represents life. When blood is poured out, life is poured out. There has to be an account for that. See, blood is mercy. Blood is a covenant. Blood sanctified the altar. Blood justifies us. Blood brings redemption. Blood brings peace. Blood cleanses us. And check this out. Gail, Mary, Dad. Blood enables us to overcome Satan. Somebody needed to hear that tonight. Blood enables us to overcome Satan. Genesis 9, 6. Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God has God made man. 
Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. God demands an accounting. We are created in the image of God. We are wonderfully and creatively made. When a man's blood is shed, there must be an accounting for that. There is a difference between killing and murder. I want you to think about today. I want you to think about what's going on in our world today. There is a difference between killing and a murder. And not all killing is a murder, okay? Just cause for killing, okay? Let's talk about the just cause for killing. Let's separate the killing and the murder. There could be self-defense, right? That's justifiable. Self-defense, war, accidental, could be accidental. And it could be capital punishment in due process of the law. That is in God's word. God has set up a law for us to follow for capital punishment. Killing is not the same as murder. Let me say it again. Killing is not the same as murder. Romans 13, 1 through 4 says, it teaches us that punishment of the guilty is the role of human government to restrain man's depravity. There is no unlawful killing of any kind whatsoever in God's word. There is an account for all. Let, let me show you this. I'm going to try to bring this up on my phone, and I want you to see this. Can you see this? Can you see? Let me turn the light down. Maybe that's a little bit better. That is Tyler, okay? This is Tyler who was caught in the news yesterday. He was a fugitive for killing some folks in, in here in, in Missouri. They caught him yesterday. I'm sure if you watched the news, you saw that yesterday. There were 300 people working 24-7, 300 officers working 24-7 searching for him. A week, Tyler Terry eluded the officers. He was breaking into cars, he was stealing shoes, he was stealing clothes, he was stealing water. A week on the run, he was completely exhausted. And the police find him hiding in the, wood, in the weeds of all places. After killing four people, he was taken into custody without harm, without incident, without anybody else getting hurt. And a community where he was there for a week, where all these police officers were homing in on him, got to sleep last night for the first time in comfort. When Carol showed me that picture last night, she began to cry. She did. And it's a police officer so many of them showed him compassion. He had every right to not be given compassion. But look at him. His shirt was torn. He's exhausted. He's dirty. He's shoeless. He's hungry. He's thirsty. He did wrong. He evaded and did his best to try and, and not get caught. They finally caught him. It ended peacefully. The police in that picture has given him water. They gave him Gatorade. They provided medical care. And let me tell you, in, in all this, God will have an accounting for the blood that he shed. He will have an accounting for him. God will deal with Tyler Terry. There will be an accounting for him. Genesis 9, 7. As for you, be fruitful and increase in number. Multiply on the earth and increase upon it, God says. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, God is speaking. Verse 9, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you. Everyone say descendants after you. That's important. It doesn't mean just for them. I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals and all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. Verse 11, I establish my covenant with you. Never again, everyone say never again. If you have your Bibles open, I want you to underline that, highlight that. Never again, God says, will all life be cut off by the waters of the flood. Never again 
Say it again. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. Verse 12. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations, for time, all generations, for us, everyone, behind us and in front of us, all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rain appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting, everyone say everlasting, I will remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on earth. And in close, verse 17, this is where we're going to stop. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life on earth. God made this covenant a law. It's an agreement with all of mankind. God's promise is true. It is dependable. It's a promise to all of creation. God said this to humanity. He said it to the animals and to the earth itself. Never again will the floodwaters destroy all the earth. He gives us a rainbow, a beautiful a rainbow. And even today, it's a reminder for all generations, past and present, it represents God's faithfulness and his promise. So, I want you to remember this. When you see this summer, the next rainbow, and they're mostly after a storm, right? It's a turbulent time. It's a storm that comes through, and then we see God's favor. We see his resemblance. We see his faithfulness. We see his covenant. We see his promise to us that God reminds us of his love for us. He remembered Noah. He also remembers us. He remembers us in our place, in our struggle, in our battles, and the things that we face today. Genesis 9, 17. So God said to Noah, God says this to us. This is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life for me and you on the earth. Lord, we just thank you for today's message. We thank you for just a, the, just a reminder, Lord, that you do not forget us, that you remembered us, that you have given us a promise for all of creation, for all of mankind, from now until eternity, that you made a promise not only to us, but the animals and to the actual earth itself, that you would never, ever again flood and destroy everything. God, you give us such great examples in this. And Lord, we thank you for using Noah as a leadership person and to lead forward. And what it is that you have to say then as you do now. Lord, we thank you for your saving grace that you were able to pull all of this little bit of light out of the darkness to make a way for us. You made a way for Jesus to come through the righteousness of of that side of the family tree and not in the wickedness and the darkness and the blackness of everything else that's taken place. But you have given us that tree line for him to be on this earth and to come and save us. Lord, we thank you for this. We thank you for the message tonight. And Lord, I pray that it is, speaks volumes to somebody today. That you are not too far gone to be saved by grace and God's love. May we never, ever Look at a rainbow the same again. May we stop in our tracks and remind ourselves of what God is really showing us. May we be in awe of what you are doing and what you have done and what you will do. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And I say amen. Everyone say amen. 34 minutes in. Guys, I'm excited for serving. I'll see you guys in a little bit. I'm really excited for next week as we close out the book on uh, Noah in chapter 9. And uh, I'll see you in person for that message. But I'll see what we can do to see if we can get it recorded for everyone else that can't be there. So I want you guys to stay safe, stay well, uh, stay looking up, stay hopeful. 
Um, do the things that you got to do. Be a blessing and uh, share God's love. Okay? I'll see you guys soon. All right. Love you all.